How did I end up in Morocco? This story begins in Spain. It was 2018, and I was hanging out in Madrid after walking my second pilgrimage on the Camino de Santiago. As a birthday present to myself, I flew to Marrakesh, Morocco. And this was the very first time I stepped foot on the amazing continent of Africa. Welcome to Marrakesh, Morocco. What a vibrant city. I booked a hotel near the Medina and immediately began exploring <laughs> and sampled food along the way. It's fun to get lost in all its maze-like alleyways and endless marketplaces. You can take a stroll through its beautiful gardens and visit historical palaces and many mosques. Marrakesh is a 10 on the scale of aliveness. I was on overstimulation mode, <laughs> wandering around and taking it all in. After a few days of exploring Marrakesh, I met up with some friends for a road trip across Morocco to the Atlantic Ocean. I was enchanted by the coastal city of Essaouira. Further south, I discovered the sleepy village of City Kauki, full of donkeys and camels. It was extremely windy. I felt like Lawrence of Arabia. One of the more fascinating spectacles you'll see in the region are goats in trees. <laughs> They're quite agile up there. They climb the argon trees and happily forage for the fruit. Just pull off to the side of the road. <laughs> it's worth seeing. I find everything so curious and interesting Life is certainly not dull in Morocco. The next part of the journey led me to an exotic desert oasis with the most gorgeous grounds and a Berber style tent accommodations. My true sense of adventure was tested while driving over the Atlas Mountains. With its dangerous winding roads inches away from plummeting down into the gorges below, driving in a rickety old camper van over one of the top five most perilous roads was unforgettable.
Once over the Atlas Mountains, I was relieved to be back at sea level again. Morocco was so amazing, I went back again six months later to explore other areas, starting with Fez, its oldest imperial city. The Sahara Desert had been on my bucket list. And what a blessing to experience its magnificence, its mystery, and its beauty. I stayed overnight in a luxurious Berber camp arriving by camel. Tried some sandboarding on the dunes. And visited an authentic nomad camp for tea with a family of one husband, three wives, and 13 children. I'd seen photos of the famous blue city of Morocco, but there's nothing quite like exploring its charm firsthand. Oh, this smells absolutely delicious. Arab food is my third favorite in the entire world, and I adore its unique use of foods and spices. A traditional Northwest African type of cuisine is a slow simmered stew in a covered earthenware pot called tagine. <laughs> I ate tagine every day while I was in Morocco. The stew can be lamb, beef, or chicken, and it's often cooked with fruits and vegetables. Tagines are served with a flatbread, and usually they come with a side of a cucumber, tomato salad, or an array of delicious olives. Tea pouring is a ritual. There's an art of pouring tea from high angles into a glass. It not only aerates the tea and infuses a mint flavor, it's also an act of respect for the guest. Now the real way to drink Moroccan mint tea, I'm gonna see if I can capture this. There's an art to it. Let's see if I can get this on camera, okay. So we've got the mint, fresh mint in there. I like the sugar. Uh, stir it up. Now this is done three times. It's poured from uh, a long distance. Aerating that. Put it back in. This is done three times like that before you drink it. And that's how you do Moroccan fresh mint tea. It's amazing. And I love the smell of fresh mint wafting through the air at all their open marketplaces. Morocco loves its open markets and the pure vibrancy of walking through all the produce and wares is wonderfully overwhelming. I 
I drank tea with nomads under a tent in the Sahara Desert. They gathered the water by foot from a nearby river. And together we shared their bread and biscuits. I make it a point to taste as much as possible. Whether that be freshly ground almond butter, or sweet and tangy pomegranate juice. Life is certainly delicious. And I'm sure my palate appreciates the exquisite dance of flavors across my taste buds. From a simple street food breakfast to an amazing restaurant banquet to home-cooked meals made with friends and breaking bread with strangers in the most modest of kitchens. Diverse cultures and customs of the world intrigue me, and I always remain an eager student with an open heart and mind to learn from new environments, languages, people, and life lessons. I was never satisfied just watching National Geographic on TV or reading its magazines. Nope, I wanted to create my own. it is, and I am thoroughly grateful to experience all these beautiful adventures.